New study says coffee may prevent heart attacks. Heavy coffee drinking linked to early death. Dark chocolate helps you lose weight. Great headlines, but sometimes the catchiest headlines are examples of what is commonly referred to as junk science, a term Oxford Dictionary defines as untested or unproven theories when presented as scientific fact. In fact, the chocolate weight loss headline was actually a deliberate attempt by a journalist to illustrate the problem with junk science. Here's how it worked. A science journalist frustrated by junk science created a fictitious institute, hired a real doctor and statistician to run the study, and recruited participants. The subjects were randomly assigned to three groups. A control group that made no dietary changes, a group following a low-carbohydrate diet, and a group that followed the same low-carb diet but also ate a one and a half ounce bar of dark chocolate daily. Researchers then took 18 different measurements, from sleep quality to weight loss, knowing there was a high probability of getting a significant result from one of the measurements. The one that surfaced was a 10% weight loss for the group that ate the chocolate. Researchers did not account for anything else that might have contributed to the weight loss, like physical activity. Study findings were published within 24 hours by a scientific journal with no peer review, a press release announcing study findings was sent to media outlets, and despite obvious design flaws with the study, such as only involving 15 people, most scientists balk at anything less than 30, major media outlets published it as scientific fact. Suddenly, chocolate helps you lose weight, according to bad science and absentee journalism. The chocolate weight loss hoax demonstrates the public health impact of junk science. It's a pervasive problem, and it can be hard to pinpoint where it starts. Something may be awry at any point in the process. It could be a poorly designed study published in a predatory science journal. Or it could be a journalist cherry-picking data and overstepping the results of a well-performed study to fulfill some confirmation bias. The days of spending weeks investigating and reporting on studies have given way to the new media landscape that craves fresh, clickable, shareable content every day. And while the rise of social media and blogging have made it easier than ever to share great information, it's also increased the spread of junk. The two good-to-be-true headlines we see about superfoods, fad diets, and miracle supplements are often profound conclusions not supported by good science. Junk science isn't just about researchers and journalists. We play a role as readers. So what tools can we use to help spot junk science? First of all, some junk science headlines extrapolate data from animal studies and apply them to humans but animal studies have limited relevance to human health. They're used to hone questions and generate hypotheses, not as one-to-one -one comparisons. It's also important to remember statistical significance in a scientific study is not the same as biological significance, meaning if some people ran a statistically significant amount faster after eating a banana than those who didn't, it ultimately doesn't matter if neither group can outrun a hungry tiger. And single food-related studies should be expressed with enough context for you to properly weigh the information. So if the headline reads, Miracle Tea is New Weight Loss Cure, you should be asking yourself how many people did they test this on? And what else were those people doing to lose weight in addition to drinking this Miracle Tea? Since duplication is the mark of a good study, scientists are always racing to be number two. If a single study isn't confirmed by follow-up studies, it may be an outlier for a reason. Science is not an indisputable fact-making discipline. It's a process of reducing uncertainty by testing hypotheses. So next time you see something on the news or social media about a new miracle food, the cure-all for weight loss, or the poison hiding in your pantry, dig into those headlines before mistaking junk science for real science.